I'm Fanny Brun and I'm doing research on lakes on the Tibetan Plateau. I am fascinated by environmental changes in this cold and extreme landscape that we, as scientists, are not able to explain yet. The Tibetan Plateau is home to thousands of lakes and unique because it is mostly uninhabited by humans due to high altitude. This provides Earth scientists the opportunity to study the results of climate change in an undisturbed region. Since the mid-90s, satellite imagery has shown that in the central and eastern part of the plateau, lakes have been growing in size. Most of these lakes are not connected to river systems, which makes scientists wonder why they have been growing. How does your research connect to this mystery, Fanny? Yes, so our team at Utrecht University works on data analysis to figure out the reason behind the growing lakes. We started by looking at glacier melt, which has increased over the past decades due to climate change. We got our data on glaciers from satellite images and the 3D maps that were already made for the area. Based on this data, we could calculate how much volume the glaciers have lost since 2000. At the same time, we compared this to the yearly increase in lake levels. And surprisingly, we found that melting glaciers are only responsible for 20% of the lake volume increase. So while the melting glaciers would be a logical answer, they are obviously not the main cause for the rising lake levels. So what else is going on there? Well, there are many other processes in the water cycle that could contribute. It turned out, however, that for every lake, these are different. There is not much data about each specific lake because the climate models are only accurate on a large scale. So we had to switch strategy. To really understand what is responsible for the rising water, we have to model on a smaller scale. But this is the research focus of my colleague Leo. Hi, I'm Leo Martin, and I study the Paiku Lake in central Himalayas. By using small-scale modeling, I represent the hydrological processes around the lake. For this, we need to quantify many variables that we put into the model. Fanny mentioned that data is scarce, so our team went on fieldwork to place weather stations around and on the Paiku Lake. It records data by itself every 15 minutes. OK, so you've collected a lot of field data. What does it tell you about the cause of the growing lakes? So we don't have a definitive answer yet to explain why the lakes are growing. But there are three remaining hypotheses. The first option is a decrease in evaporation, so more water remains in the lake. This would imply very strong changes, because the bigger a lake becomes, the more area gets exposed to surface. This results in more evaporation instead of less. Option two is an increase in precipitation. We currently don't know enough about the specific precipitation patterns on the plateau and how they are influenced by changing climates. Option three has to do with the soil conditions, and that has only been considered recently. Because many lakes are so high up, in the mountains, temperatures are really low. A big part of the ground is permanently frozen all year round, which we call permafrost. Now we see that part of this permafrost has started thawing due to climate change. In turn, this might affect the hydrology in the watersheds and ultimately the lake levels too. The mystery of the growing lakes on the Tibetan Plateau remains to be solved. In the coming years, Fanny's and Leo's team will continue their efforts, gathering data on new fieldwork expeditions and improving their models. As climate change will continue to affect interactions in the high mountain water cycle, their research remains crucial to find the answer as to why the Tibetan lakes are growing.